down to our final two games here on Wrigley Field in the 2024 Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. It's LMU trying to earn their fourth win of the tournament. And just a bit ago, it was a walk-off for Oklahoma as they continue the streak. It's OU and LMU next on Flow Sports. Happy to have you along for the ride. Our penultimate matchup of the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic here on Wrigley features the three-time defending national champions against the preseason favorites in the West Coast Conference. It is LMU and Oklahoma live from Cathedral City. Happy to have you along for the ride, everyone. Corey Brooks, Nicole Mendez with you for these final two games on Wrigley. Nicole, Oklahoma coming off a walk-off, though not necessarily the dramatic kind. They did it in the sixth inning against a really good Seattle team, picked to win their conference. Now, Oklahoma against another team that is a preseason favorite. Two good matchups here for OU to end this tournament. And... <laughs> Two good matchups indeed, Corey. LMU, they are a stacked team, and they're going to have to be facing Oklahoma, one of the best teams in college softball, one of the only ones left undefeated. The back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back national championships, a little bit of change in their lineup from last game, but we've been seeing a lot of that this weekend, not just with Oklahoma, but with a lot of teams as they start to settle in, get <laughs> Get those preseason jitters out of the way. Trying to get their lineups, trying to get their defense settled in as the 2024 season is rolling. LMU turning to Jessica Hubbard. She has put together some of her best work here in Cathedral City, including in that matchup against Bethune Cookman yesterday for the Lions. LMU trailed five to nothing against the Wildcats. They come all the way back to win it six to five. And quite possibly the biggest reason why is in the circle right now. Jessica Hubbard was brilliant down the stretch. She goes four and a third, conceding just two hits. Keeps BCU quiet. That said, Riley Boone now hitting leadoff for the first time in this tournament. Represents a very, very different threat than LMU has seen to this point. Still, they've got the talent for it. And Boone sends that one straight back. I also want to call attention to, I mentioned the lineup was different. <laughs> Just how different. You have Riley Boone, who's typically been at that nine spot. We've seen her in the eight, but now she's off in that leadoff. But right after her are two freshmen who have been making noise for Oklahoma, Ella Parker and Cassidy Pickering. That is the top three for Oklahoma. Lifted into center and absolutely no problem for Francis at the eight spot. So here do come. That pair of freshmen for Oklahoma. That defense for LMU. Largely keeping it pretty consistent. Coach Flowers in her fourth year has a really good core and experienced group. A couple of transfers in to complement that defense. And Francis sends it up, one up, one down. First pitch to Parker. Lifts to left. Ella Parker has been living at that fence all day. Two homers a couple hours ago, and now a double. To be honest, off the bat, I was wondering, this is a freshman with power that you are going to see over and over again. This one is elevated and just a little bit too much over the plate. Hubbard trying to get her to chase after that. <laughs> Parker does, but because of that power, she's able to get that extended. Get that to the fence for an easy double there. Cassidy Pickering, who would be the talk of the town amongst the freshmen were it not for her fellow newcomer. She's gotten off to a great start as well, still batting over 400. OPS is over 1,000. Those are both exceptional numbers. She's already got nine RBI to begin her Oklahoma career as well. And she's got a chance for another with Parker hanging out at second. Talk about Hubbard, what you're going to see from her a little bit. A lot of screwball action. She's going to be telling 
away from the lefties into righties. And so it takes that in with some rise ball and a little bit of off speed. But that chase on that outer half is where she's going to get a lot of these lefties in this Oklahoma lineup. And for her, her biggest challenge today is to be able to hit those corners. You have to find the strike zone that the umpire is calling, but you leave something a little bit too much over the plate, and you'll see just what we saw a couple pitches ago with Ella Parker. Effective contact, the only way to pitch this Oklahoma team. Even when it's out of the zone, they'll get their swings on it. If you're the opponent, you need that to be at a defender, at least most of the time. Just like that. On a hop, a little stretch from Jones, Harvell from short, and Pickering down. Great bounce back there from Hubbard. Let's get a look at the Hall of Famer, Patty Gasso, three decades at the helm of this Oklahoma program. The very heart of the chase for eight in Norman. I mean, I speak from personal experience, but she is a fantastic coach. She knows how to get the most out of her players. That's what you want to see from a coach who has all that experience is the ability to not just recruit players with amazing talent, but to be able to develop them and see them grow year after year after year both on the field and off. Brito watching up top. Lisa Brito's been pretty much the most consistent part of this lineup for Oklahoma, at least in terms of where she's going, either her or Jennings. Although even Tiare moving down one slot here from four to five here in game number two. Coach Casso said there's going to be a lot of moving parts early on as you'd expect with the deepest roster in college softball. And even though Tiara Jennings has had an unbelievable tournament, she will drop to the five hole, a testament to what Brito and the rest of this team is capable of. Case in point, two out walk for Alyssa Brito. Two on for the number two RBI queen in Oklahoma history, Tiara Jennings. This pitch from Hubbard, she's trying to place it a little bit too much. I think if she throws that a little earlier in the count, she's going to get an offer on that pitch. But it's all about tacking the zone early on, establishing yourself as a pitcher. Tiara Jennings has been on a tear. She passed Chamberlain, has not looked back. has been premium in this tournament with runners in scoring position. And now she's got some count leverage to work with as well. This has been the right pitcher for keeping hitters off balance though as of late. And that's a great little answer right there from Jessica Hubbard. Throwing 22 innings already on the year. Limiting opponents to about a 200 batting average. 16 Ks to 11 walks. That one just in Talked tight. about figuring out what the strike zone looks like. That one, that's not a bad pitch. That looks pretty good. But each umpire... You have your strike zone, but each umpire, maybe they don't like that inside half. Maybe they don't like the outside. It's figuring it out as a pitcher early on. And Hubbard, she's having a hard time being able to find that zone consistently. It's the second walk in a row. Again, that strikeouts to walk ratio was pretty good. Just shy of two to one coming in for Jessica Hubbard. But it is really a different animal, Oklahoma tends to be patient and wait their turn, and it is a real early swing point in the game. On the one hand, there's two outs, and Hubbard is one pitch away from a clean first inning of work against the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back champions. On the other hand, Kinsey Hansen will come up with the bases loaded. So, Coach Jeffries come up, speak to her pitcher, now talking to her defense a little bit. 
she has a lot of experience, not just with being able to be on the mound, being able to understand the pitching development of offense, defense, the whole shebang, but what she does really great is being able to get these players to settle in, lock in, reset. That, I think that's what LMU needs. Just a little bit of reset right here. Yeah, two outs. There's a perfect reset pitch to do it, working ahead on Hanson. Riley Ludlam did the work in the first game. So this is a fresh Kinsey Hanson to boot. Oklahoma utilizing that catching duo. A look at the set. The freshman Parker, the bombster Brito, and history maker Jennings. A lot of talent on the base paths right now for Oklahoma. Plenty of good in the circle as well. Hubbard trying to get out of it. Lifted into left where it sits for Sofawara. Hubbard dances out of danger again. Effective. And her team's coming up next. Raya Flowers in her fourth year here for the Lions, a gold medalist and a national champion at UCLA. She was the second winningest coach, Northridge. And she goes from CSUN to LMU. And certainly has this team trending in the right direction. We saw Avery Francis already make one routine play in center field, but got a glimpse at those wheels. She's going to lead things off with a group that's come in playing really well. We mentioned 6-5 to five win against BCU. Also 2-0 against a very good Northwestern team. So this offense is in a rhythm. It's another May Day here for Oklahoma. Nicole May in the circle once again. The senior and leader of this staff. Her first pitch against the Lions. Up top for ball one. mentioned we saw Francis she is one of the hottest bats for LMU right now had a lot of success against Northwestern had success in this tournament really and has really been able to come through for her team which is great because you want to see that in a lead off of the consistency of getting on base the consistency of just good eyes seeing a lot of pitches making your team be able to see what this other opposing pitcher has Avery's had a multi-hit game, two of her last three here at Mary Nutter. Off to a tremendous start to the year. And this tournament really has been the launching pad. And she will reach base against Nicole May, opening base runner for the Lions. This defense look a little different. Oklahoma changing things up a smidge and you see Hodge at second and Torres at first, so that'll alter it up. Matching up with LMU. LMU keeping it relatively consistent on defense. Oklahoma, couple of tinkering moments for Patty Gassa. Good little riser in there. Lauren Carter going after it.
Carter flashing bunt. Anson just a couple of moves back. And Francis gets the pants a little dirty. The white still looking clean, even on the dive back. Sat on that. Gets by Hodge. That was well played by Lauren Carter. Francis into third. Lions at the corners. LMU a roaring start. This is what happens whenever you hit the ball hard off the bat. This one making Hodge have to range over into that 3-4 hole. She was hard up the middle. And then some really, really good base running by Francis. We talked about her being able to lead it off, but that's not just in the box. It's on the base path as well, being a smart runner, being aggressive, and knowing when to combine the two. Puts LMU in a really great position with no outs and runners on the corners. Izzy Jamgachian watching strike one. And as we talk about these Lions who have played so well in this tournament, Izzy has five RBI in her last three games here for LMU including two against Bethune yesterday and a home run against Rutgers. The Lion catcher locked in and right now trying to give her team the opening lead. Just enough off that pitch from May. and down looking big bounce back by May that one a little low in the zone but I think the difference that we've seen between May and Hubbard is she has attacked the zone early on in the count consistently whenever you show that you can pound the zone consistently as a pitcher even though she's only two batters in now going on to her fourth batter whenever you show that you are attacking the zone consistently Helps you get some calls. Kinsey Hansen was the traffic cop right there, directing the flow of everything. May to Torres for the out. And now it will be one on one. And Cole May Nicole will just May. lock in and focus. Watch Nicole May on this replay here. The way that she has the hindsight as a pitcher to check that runner at third, make sure they don't come, and then be able to reset her feet quickly and throw it to first. She is one of those pitchers who, once a ball leaves her hand, she can be a fielder, she can be a defender. Caster sends it right up the chute. Two outs now, so Nicole's just going to forget about Francis and Carter, both in prime position for LMU. May dropped it off the table. At off speed, it just tumbles down. <laughs> Whenever she throws that pitch, see it just get lower and lower. Slow roll, May. The final two outs belong to Nicole May. Both teams threaten, but that's it. Opportunities by the wayside, zeros.
Everybody loves the home runs. And at the end of the schedule, you see the leaders, including coming into today, a team that LMU knows extremely well. Their former conference mates in the WCC and the team they topped last year by one conference win, but that's all it takes. LMU over Brigham Young last year to win the WCC and get it done. Ella Parker has been a superstar. She's got Oklahoma, unsurprisingly, in that home run chase here to close things out. Final game, Jada Coleman, first pitch swing, and Jada Coleman. Well, move him up the leaderboard. Another for the Sooners. We talked about the adjustment of lineups. Jada Coleman typically leading off this lineup. She's down in the seven hole and leads this off with a massive home run. This one, she's able to take up deep to center field. A little bit of, hey, Coach Gasso, put me back at that one spot. And she <laughs> is going eyes up all the way into home. Jada Coleman's first home run of the year has Oklahoma up by one. And this is the different part of the OU lineup, Nicole. Alina Torres and Avery Hodge, both in at the same time and hitting back to back. Haven't seen that yet. This is an opportunity that Coach Gasso is giving both Torres and Hodge. We've seen them battling it out at second, but she has said the one who is most consistent offensively, that's the one that ultimately will end up in that spot. And I think this is her saying, let me put some pressure off of you two of if I don't get a hit this inning, will she put the other one in and puts both of them in this game and says, all right, pressure's off. Let me see what you do when the pressure pressure's off. So used to seeing Sanders over at first. Right now it's Alina playing over there and hitting eight, Hodge nine. That's the luxury this Oklahoma team has. this inning really settle in after that big monster hit by Jada Coleman she settled in she's been able to come out Torres hard being able to find that strike zone that was kind of eluding her a little bit last inning put her into a little bit of a jam turned on that one a little too soon Torres saw it though there you go Reward the effort. That's a barehanded grab out there, and that thing had some pepper on its way beyond foul territory. Too much drop out of the hand of Hubbard. Torres on with a walk. And I like that thought by Hubbard, though. She's gone in, in, in on Torres. A lot of hard foul ball hits down the line into the outside of the field. Mix that up with that hard going soft on that outside half. Well, soft on that front leg, and that one fell a little bit too short, but I like that pitch sequence from her. But rolls foul here for Avery Hodge. We saw Hodge try to lay down a squeeze to end the game. Last inning, everybody yeah. thought the game was over, and her foot just out of the box. So with that rule change a couple of years ago, it's now, if your foot's out of the box and you make contact, it's not an out, but it's just a strike. Yep. 
So it wound up turning up getting the walk-off the fly, fly instead of the walk-off <laughs> squeeze, which is definitely a little more fun. You don't usually see a walk-off squeeze too often, but Oklahoma will take it regardless. Goes high shot, Harvell on it. That's the only play to Caster still. That's a really good adjustment with the ball in the air. It's a good pitch by Hubbard going up in the zone, that rise ball that we talked about. But I think Hodge does such a good job of keeping those hands high, keeping her barrel above the ball so she can slam that ball into the ground. It just took Harvell just right towards second to get that out at second. Riley Boone rips into right. Couple of hops into the fence. Boone stands at second. Hodge scores. The Sooners double the lead. Riley Boone has been on a tear. Another pitch elevated up and out to the lefty. And she's able to put this in almost the exact spot that she did last game in that right center gap. And an easy stand-up double to score another run. Boone now hitting over 500 for this tournament. She's brought in three. It's her third double. And Oklahoma in a great spot now because it's a runner in scoring position for Ella Parker. Numbers for Parker to this point in the tournament. Eight hits and 13 at-bats. Good enough for a batting average of over 600. She has scored five times. She has gone yard twice, two doubles, and nine RBI for the freshmen. We can go ahead and say that's the first name on the all-tournament team. Hubbard trying to throw this really good hitter, Parker. Anything that can put her off balance. Two change-ups. Something out of the zone. Parker. And that's the trap. Great. Yep. That's the trap that she wanted her to fall into. That slow change-up. It's hard as a hitter. Even if you're used to that timing, Hubbard's off-speed is so slow and floaty. It just makes you, as a hitter, want to go after that. And Hubbard, she knows that. And so that's why she called it three times and one at bat to get that chase and get that batter out in front. Goes right back to the flutter ball. Has a little too much dip into Cassidy Pickering. That off speed is something that we're going to see from her for the remainder of this game. Because whenever you pair that with that screwball with the rise ball, as a hitter, you cannot, the split in speed difference, it's too large. You cannot be set up on time for that hard pitch and that soft one at the same time. So you're going to have to pick one or the other. It's also harder to turn that off speed around, right? You know, obviously nobody likes 70 coming at them, but if you're on it, that velocity goes the other way and it goes a long way. When you're getting one that's lofted at you, it's a lot tougher just from a physics standpoint. Pickering into foul territory now. Pickering, similar results. 
little straighter. Still foul. I'd be aware down there. Good catch. Back to back screws, long foul balls by Pickering. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw something in that off speed. Something to get Pickering to go out and chase it. Just feeling that taste of the hard hit. Hubbard trying to set her up here. That off speed, Pickering sat on it the entire way. Boone's coming home. It's a two spot in the frame for Oklahoma. This is a nice job by Pickering. You can see her almost want to let those hands go through, but she keeps them back so nicely, and she's able to drive this one up the middle. And Riley Boone, a ton of speed on the bases. That always helps whenever you have speed. But Riley Boone, she's able to score quite easily. Coming around Oklahoma up three to nothing. Hubbard's done a really nice job as of late. But you have to pitch by committee against OU, especially when they're locked in like this. So a pitching change here for the Lions. We step aside on flow softball. LMU is going to make this a full staff game. And so they turn to Alessandra Samperio. Nine innings pitched so far. Last saw her against Rutgers. She threw two-thirds of an inning. Scarlet Knights got one run on her. Four Ks, seven walks. This is her seventh appearance of the year. Seven walks number stands out to me. If you want to be effective against Oklahoma, part of the reason why they're so good is because they're disciplined at the plate. They will get, they'll take the walk if you give it to them. And then you have runners on, you put a ball over the plate, that's when they get those hits. So being effective early on in the count, getting those strike calls early on, that's gonna help you a ton. Sampedio on the doorstep of a breakout campaign. This appearance means she has already exceeded the number of times she was in the circle last year. Brito, though, put it just out of reach of Harvell. A perfectly placed ball for Alyssa Brito, who is on for the second straight time. This one just falls into no man's land. Brito doesn't square this one up too much but is just in that right spot. She was a little out in front of that ball. Caught it on the end of her bat, but that one's just falling over the head of the third baseman. Tiara Jennings watching strike one. Just shy of 10 RBI in this tournament in her own right. Hitting about 500. Sat on it perfectly. Jennings rips it to the fence. Pickering round easily. Brito scores as well. Tiare stands at third. Two more RBI for number two in Oklahoma history. Tiare Jennings. This is the same location, just a little bit elevated that the one that Brito got. And Jennings, she's able to get this one 
a little bit harder, gets it all the way to the fence, but it's that slight bobble over there in left field that causes Brito to be able to come into home safely. Big smiles all around, a little bit of a chest bump as she comes back into the dugout. Three of these five runs coming with two outs now. The Pickering single and the double by Jennings. Kinsey Hansen is the final Oklahoma hitter who has not gone already here in this second frame. And a sweet grab by Harvell closes it out. She's done really good work at short, but it's five runs on five hits and the full Oklahoma attack. I'd like to thank our sponsors, the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic, including Japan Takam. Japan Takam is the Japanese trade association of confectionery manufacturers, as well as Jug Sports. The Mini 3 Jugs machine is the easy answer to all your softball practice needs. Right now, practice is paying off for Oklahoma here in Cathedral City. The Sooners up by five, all coming in that second inning. And now if you're the Lions, you're trying to scrap together one or two here. Stay in striking distance of the three-time defending champions. Got to remember, too, LMU last inning, they got out hot. They had runners on the corners pretty much right away. Ended up leaving them stranded. Both of these teams... Runners in scoring position early on this game. Left them stranded in the first. Obviously, Oklahoma this past half inning really showed, okay, <laughs> I got it going. We're able to roll into their rhythm, and they got five across in a quick manner. But LMU, they are a team that, think of them as the Lion Pride. It's an acronym that they live by, and part of that is... Focusing on supporting each other, staying through the game, beginning to end, being able to be the same no matter what, being able to support each other no matter what. And I think that's so important in a team and a lot easier said than done. Especially whenever you're facing against a team like Oklahoma, it can feel overwhelming, maybe even a little bit intimidating. So the more together you are as a team and say, you know what? Okay, so what? They scored five. Let's stay in this right. game. Let's make the most of every single bat. Don't make it too big. I got your back. You got mine. Let's continue to work together. And California Flowers is an, an incredible player herself. She's yeah. been able to instill that into her teams and make them the program that they have become over these past few years. Whether it's CSUN or here with LMU, there's no doubt about that. And the California crew has had some advantages here. We already saw Fullerton really dismantle a top five Tennessee team. LMU will try and take advantage of a similar fact. But Oklahoma, coming off the front end of that double header, probably helps too. 
it's some extra wear and tear on the arms, but OU has the staff for it. And on the other end of it, you get an offense that has already seen live action today, Nicole. They're already in a rhythm, and that's pretty clearly translated for the Sooners. And Nicole May. Nice pitch by Nicole May. She keeps this one on that low and outside corner. You see that little bit of drop at the very end, the tail end of that pitch. Boys a barrel. She gets a K. Christina Jones has made some memories here at this tournament. She got her first hit against Bethune. She's already exceeded her at that total from a year ago. For the sophomore, really looking to step up for the Lions here in her second year. Blue strike today. And vertical, not horizontal. We talked a little bit about it yesterday. So the different colors, blue versus red. Blue is a little bit more calming. Helps you settle in as a pitcher just a little bit more. Red, that one is... I think a little bit more, okay, we're gonna attack a little bit aggressive, but that horizontal versus vertical, that's just so the pitcher, their eyes can keep that movement of where their pitches go. Nicole May, she depends a lot on that rise ball, so being able to see that vertical line helps her stay, okay, I'm on that rise ball plane. Versus yesterday, we saw Kirsten Deal <laughs> yep. have a nasty side-to-side -side movement with her curveball, that one helps her keep that curveball on that same plane moving from west to east. The so deal went horizontal blue. Carly Keeney, the starter this morning, was horizontal red. As the softball world starts to dive in to this Oklahoma staff. Tight, did the job. Back-to-back -back K's for Nicole May. Nicole May getting this one a little tight on the inside half, but just Kenzie Hansen sticking that, working that for her team. She sold it a little bit with the celebration. So that inside half has been tight for LMU. The junior Pero scheduled to hit here. <laughs> Chopped up, couple into Hodge. Pinch hit bid, left wanting. May locked in, sends him down one, two, three. She's got six straight, her team up by five. Jada Coleman has one of a few loud swings here in this game, including her home run to lead off the second inning. Right after we showed you the home run leaderboard here in Cathedral City, Jada Coleman said, all right, we're moving on up. She rounds them all. And the Oklahoma offense responded shortly thereafter. Five runs on five hits. Jada Coleman led off the second inning. Jada Coleman 
will lead off the third inning. And that is versatility as a batter. You see that out of a lot of hitters here at Mary Nutter. The ability to go from a big swing to laying down the bunt, being able to get down there with your speed. Jada Coleman offering on that one. But she was a little out in front. That quick lunge. Push that ball just a little too foul. Go back. Zamperio floats it in just outside. Coach Gasso talked about, obviously, Jada Coleman is Jada Coleman, but her wanting to give her a little bit of a push, light a fire underneath her, and moving her from one to seven. Obviously, whoever's up at the top, Riley Boone has been great. Ella Parker, I mean, you've already seen it this game. Castle Pickering, Lisa Brito, Tiari Jennings, all of those are great. And they have been doing fantastic job this tournament. But I also just makes me wonder a little bit, okay, coach, wanting to light just a little bit of a fire in her typical leadoff, getting her to reset and get back to her normal self. Good job by Semperio for the out. Well, Coleman, who's still done nice the job today, hits. had that home run. It's that leading pitch on that outer half of the corner. We talked about LMU and the idea of making those lefties in Oklahoma's lineup chase after those balls, especially the low and away ones. Alina Torres, couple of hops to Braun. Swift answer from LMU. This is what you want to see if you're rooting for the Lions. Two quick outs to answer the five spot in the second. I'd say with most of the lefties, the idea is to make them chase. Avery Hodge, obviously a little bit of an exception dominantly a slapper I think LMU they're going to want to bust her in and then push balls on that outer half maybe a ball or two on that outside corner to make her chase Tight, 3-0. Right now, 3-1. Patience at the plate by Hodge, not going, not falling into that trap that has been laid for her, but being able to wait, have the discipline and the patience to be able to get that pitch she's searching for. Hodge sat on it, so did Caster. Four to three for out number three. Alessandra Samperio in her first full inning. Three up, three down.
Not that you need to cool off on a beautiful California day, but a snow cone is still undefeated. One of the premium <laughs> snacks no matter where you are, but it's still a key part of any fair activity. And even more directly, your future oh. sponsors, Nicole, the main attraction <laughs> besides the softball. Oh my gosh, forget talking about anything. Let's just replay that last <laughs> hour and a half. Man, that kettle corn. I dream about it. I think I might have dreamed about it last night. I woke up hungry this morning. Oh. One of, oh, there it is again. Yep, see. I'm oh, a close up <laughs> slow mo. <laughs> Straight up. No, the players on the field there. thinking about it. Oh, oh yeah. That's it. Next half inning, I'm going to go get myself a sweet treat. <laughs> Smells like two things softball and kettle corn here in Cathedral City. Big tight. Or Harvell working ahead in the count. Does raise the very important question, though. What is your favorite color of snow cone? Flavor, color, same thing. Okay, hear me out. Okay. Very light syrup with strawberry. Okay. Harvell lifts to Coleman for the first. Light syrup on the strawberry. Half a lime freshly squeezed into the snow cone. And then all right. before you pack in all your ice, you put one of those sour punch straws down at the bottom. And that is the perfect Ooh. one. They had them in all Norman, right. Oklahoma. It was two minutes from the field and in the summertime. That was like my go-to spot every every day. I like that answer a lot. I just expected a basic red or blue and oh, in no, classic no. national champion fashion. You had a full game plan ready. It's not balls I or strikes. Did. It's here's how we're going to approach this. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, what's yours? Oh, red. <laughs> <laughs> red. <laughs> the, more, the more syrup, the better. Oh. <laughs> nice pitch by Nicole Bates. Her eyes ball Woo. is dirty. Coming into four, you can see that late break and a little bit of Kinsey Hansen as she's going to get that tail end away from the slapper. That makes it really hard. Because <laughs> that's a slapper. Your first thought is as soon as I make contact, I'm running down first. So it's really hard to ignore that urge to kind of trail off towards first as you're swinging. Nicole May, who's gotten better and better each of these last few years, really flashing right now. Three Ks in the last five batters. Use the perfect phrase, settling in. No doubt about that. Inside, Carter's just standing there waiting. Before you mentioned straight, Jorge just getting better and better every single year. I think that has to do with her mindset and her willingness to be open and even though she was already a great pitcher, she's constantly asking the question, how can I get better? And that comes in the form of talking to her fellow pitchers. Hey, what are you thinking? What's your mindset? How, how do you approach this pitch? Talking with the hitters. What are you looking for as a hitter? What do you like as a hitter? What deceives you as a hitter?
What a room to work in with players who are the best at what they do. Straight to Torres, Oklahoma up by five. San Jacinto State Park in Palm Springs, the San Jacinto Mountains, overlooking the action here in Cathedral City. It's a fun ride up, a fun ride down, and that about sums up our action over the course of this entire Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. Our ride up, those first few games, incredible, and now we're on our way down here on the final day, and the action has been just as good. Riley Boone, can get on base in every single way possible in the sport of softball. I mean, she could do it all. This one tapped right in front of home plate, right in front of the catcher, but the ground is so hard. If you bounce that anywhere near in front of home plate, it just sky highs and you are just stuck as a defender waiting for it to come down. By then, Riley Boone, she's safely on first. LMU turning to Lindsay O'Dell in the circle, by the way. Little over 14 innings pitched so far on the year. 13 Ks, seven walks. A fresh arm to deal with the freshman, Parker. Dell really challenged by Bethune Cookman. That was when BCU got off to that incredible start. Lindsay feeling she's due for a bounce back. <laughs> Sophomore. Coming from Taylor, Texas to California. Odell's pitch right up the middle. Harvell steps, throws. Lions at twin bill. I mean, it doesn't matter if Riley Boone gets on. This is a tailor-made double play right here. Great range by Harvell to be able to get in that spot. That was hit hard by Parker, but knowing her pitcher, knowing where that hitting zone is she's able to cheat up the middle just a little bit get that tap it on second get that double play see gasso talking to pickering probably just to slow down the pace of the game that was a bang bang play both of the first two batters riley boone and ella parker took maybe one to two pitches between the two of them there wasn't a lot of time in between. You want to give your pitcher May a little bit more rest. Especially as with that double play, the Sooners have gone down to the tune of six straight. Across three different pitchers. Hubbard, Sampadio, and now Odell. Nice job. I think Odell got a piece of that, and it puts Cassidy Pickering on base. Come on, Come 
Yeah, I think you're right, Corey. That one just tipped off the edge of her glove and unfortunately deflected it. You could see Caster was on her way up the middle trying to go after that ball. And by that deflection, it just went into that 3-4 hole and she wasn't able to recover it in time. Right off the tip of that glove. A bad beat, honestly, for Odell. So you have to train that reaction. That ball squirts away. And so Pickering takes second. Just a little bit of bobble right there, but it's enough to be able to get Pickering to get out. It's a towering fly ball that keeps going and going. A burrito bomb for Oklahoma. Alyssa <laughs> Burrito. You said it here. She has been the most consistent batter, and this one elevated over the heart of the plate. She is going to take this one long, far, deep over the fence of left field. That consistency has paid off, and it has been paid off with power. Oklahoma breaks that streak of not being able to score. They were within one, but they scored two this inning. A massive chunk of Oklahoma's runs in this tournament have come with two outs. It is the case today, it was the case yesterday, and since the Sooners came to Cathedral City, the two out magic has remained strong. Something that they work on in practice, Patty Gasso, she is all for making practice as hard as possible. So whenever you're in tough situations in a game, it doesn't feel unfamiliar, unfamiliar, it doesn't feel foreign, something that you're able to embrace. So working with two outs, it's not a problem because they do it all the time in practice. That just speaks to her mindset of pushing the envelope, seeing how far they can go, seeing how good they can get. That misses ball four. Tiare Jennings on base all three times today. She's been locked in. It's not the worst thing to have her just walk it out. Doesn't get much easier though with Kinsey Hansen. Our second to last game of the day and of the tournament here at Wrigley. We will see a top five Lady Vols team take on UCLA in our finale. Those Vols dominating the Rainbow Wahine eight to nothing over on Fenway. So it seems like Tennessee will do exactly what Oklahoma did win the front end of their double header and take that momentum into a big matchup. Good pitch there by Odell on that lower half of the corner to Kinsey Hansen. She is a tall girl. She is six foot. And so to be able, yes, she has long levers, but to be able to reach down in that lowest, farthest half of that zone, that's a far reach for her. That's a good strike call to get her to that second strike. Puts you in a good count position as a pitcher. Count. 
for Kenzie Hansen. Love the flip does the job for Caster, but a two run home run from Alyssa Burrito has Oklahoma way in front. Bats and Mantra Plus bats. If you want to increase your bat speed, reduce tension, and take your game to the next level, the Airwave Performance Mouthpiece delivers those benefits and more. Check out the Airwave. One of those things we don't think a lot about. You know, you think about bats, gloves, Evo shields. Those are the performance pieces we see all the time. The mouthpiece, not something really at the front of the mind, but unbelievably important. When you need it, Nicole, you are so happy that it's there. Yeah, Corey, you sound great. Uh, absolutely, though. I think breathing in and of itself is an underrated aspect of softball, whether it comes to yeah. slowing down your heart rate, being able to breathe and reset a situation in your head. Nice pitch, Nicole May. On that outer half, that ball just dropped off. But being able to reset your breathing, slow that heart rate, clear your mind, make clear decisions, and somebody recognized that and said, all right, let's make something that automatically improves it without you consciously having to think about it. Yeah. I think it's one of those things. Growing up, playing softball, you have so many ideas of, oh, man, if somebody would just invent this, it would make everything so much easier. And somebody decided to actually do it. Right. So tell you what, I would be a millionaire if all the softball ideas I had growing up, I, I patented and I was like, all right, let's make this a thing. Right. Five years down the road, somebody made it. And I was like, dang. <laughs> ah, I thought of it first. That's <laughs> your big hack. Nicole May's really locked in now. She has been getting better and better as this game goes on. Talked about that first strike on that lower half. Ended up going in on the batter, in on the hands, and then being able to finish off that at bat in that same location where you started, low and away. It's funny, earlier we were talking about your, your favorite habits as far as the snow cone goes. Izzy Jumgachian, big Red Bull fan. She'll take one before every game. I'm sure there's a lot of that going around here with the consistent number of games we have here at Mary Nutter. I'm curious if in your playing days, Nicole, was, was it a Starbucks run before the game? Was it some candy? What was the go-to pre-game energy source? Okay, Corey, you should know by my snow cone answer, it's nothing simple. <laughs> uh, <laughs> before games, I would have a black milk tea boba before every okay. single game until my junior year, my mom sent me this article 
Cranes just out of the glove of Ludlam taking over at first base here for Oklahoma. Ludlam looks like she was expecting Hansen to get it. Hansen thinking the same thing of Ludlam. Looked like the miscue just a little bit, but like you said, Ludlam, she's typically behind the plate. She's not used to being over at first, so that probably explains the lack of communication, a little bit of uncertainty. You see some great plays in that first place position. That one barely fouled. That was a nice shot. Del Braun's been playing some really good softball. Started her career at Mercer. Went through that sophomore challenge that so many do. Decided she wanted to get a lot closer to home. Grew up in San Jose, so now plays for the Lions of LMU. And she has clearly responded. Home runs in two of her last three games, including against the reigning champions in the Big Ten Northwestern. Just talked about breathing, about resetting and how it helps. You saw that deep breath that she took before she stepped in, helping her wash away last pitch. Folks on this one. Rise ball, tough to lay off. Back to back K's for May. For well, May, the last few innings she's had a couple of K's. Just adding to that tally, getting better and better. Sharper and sharper with that rise ball. That has been key against LMU this game. That late break, LMU hasn't been able to lay off that pitch. And then you're feeling that rise ball being peppered in the zone. And all of a sudden, she goes with that low and away pitch, that curveball. And then peppers it back up in the zone as a hitter. It can feel like, man, I don't know where I should be attacking. I think you're going to get both both of those pitchers in an at-bat, whether you're lefty or righty, power hitter, gapper, average player. So just picking one, buying all in, and going after it. I think that is going to be the key for LMU as they continue on throughout this game. Buying in is the right word. It's an LMU team, particularly under Coach Flowers, that will challenge itself early and often. Last year, 28 and 22, the overall record. So battle early, then go 12 and three in the league. A first place finish in WCC. Even you look at this schedule this year, you just look at Jenna Perez's pitching log. We might see her in a minute, but her season debut, she's got a complete game against Oklahoma State. Then the week after she goes against Oregon, LMU has played Texas A&M. They have gone against some of the best teams anywhere in the country. This is a group very much forged by fire. And that just outside as well. Even Perez has already gone against Oklahoma. She did it last year. She did it the year before. That one on that outer half, that was a good look by the umpire. Seeing that one on that outside, just in that river. But to your point, LMU, last year, a great record, finishing one in their conference. Ooh, looking to build off, off that this year. That's it. May strikes out the side in order. Oklahoma wants to add to the seven. It's May Day in Cathedral City.
Oklahoma going to come up here and hit. Look to add to this lead. A lot of smiles from Sooner Nation. And sure enough, we were just talking about her. Here comes Jenna Perez. Coming off a complete game shutout against Northwestern. She has as good a resume as anybody. 11 strikeouts against Oklahoma State in her season debut. Complete game shutout against the Oregon Ducks with eight strikeouts. Jenna Perez, the favorite for pitcher of the year in the WCC. In the circle now for LMU. Led the league in strikeouts last year. He's probably going to do that again. Two and one here. Ada Coleman mentioned earlier, Oklahoma trying to get her right a little bit. And that's why she's hitting a little lower in the lineup. But Jada, no stranger to adversity on the diamond or off it. Watched her mom battle breast cancer. And she was helped by an organization called Look Good, Feel Better. And once her mom beat breast cancer, Jada decided she was going to donate a part of her NIL earnings to the organization that helped her mom when she needed it most. Jada Coleman's helped Oklahoma softball quite a bit, and she stands at first base with a walk. And a special little handshake between Coleman and Folly of you, another OU alum. I like to see that. I feel like I haven't seen that too often with first base coaches. A little bit of fun there. Lena Torres watching ball one. Certainly the OU alum network stretches pretty far. And we have talked about it in nearly every game that Oklahoma has played because it always tends to be there with the opposition. And the network got even a little bigger this past offseason. Jim Gasso took over the head coaching job at Mid-American Christian University. Coach Gasso, the one here at Oklahoma, didn't even believe it at first. But sure enough, Jim got a call, took the job. And then his first call for an assistant coach, Kehlani Ricketts. That is quite the number to have on speed dial when you need to hire an assistant coach. And it's been great to see, not just with Oklahoma, but just across the country in general, a lot of fantastic softball players they're not leaving the game once they're done playing but they've stayed in it they've continued to give back they've continued to pour their knowledge into that next generation Folly of you she's won two national championships she's been a starter a great outfielder a great hitter her knowledge that she's been able to pour into athletes that's a tower ball no doubt off the bat of Alina Torres. Her first of the year. And that is the swing that we have been waiting for. Alina Torres, welcome to the show. This one, middle, middle, and she knew right away. Doesn't have to do a lot. Perez, she has a little bit more speed, a little bit more zip to that ball. So all she had to do was get her barrel at the right place in the right time. And you could see Coach Gasso say, that's all you, that's right. Only felt like a matter of time for the player that hit 500 in Oklahoma City to get back to that form. And sure enough, Torres towers to left. And this game has been shortened. Just like that, Loyola down to their final few outs in the bottom of the fifth. Oklahoma for head again to today, they weren't really on that home run leaderboard at all in between the game prior to this and this one here we've added quite a few I think Ludlow really the grad transfer 
She had her first as an Oklahoma Sooner. The momentum coming into this game, clearly favoring Oklahoma. As Ludlam lifts that one into foul territory, Jomgachi in a great effort. And I'm so curious how that affects our next game as well. UCLA is in the LMU role of only playing one today. Tennessee plays the Oklahoma part of, in all likelihood right now, a big win coming in. Your bats get hot and probably get near double-digit runs. And are you able to carry that over into game number two? Oh, you did. We'll see if the balls can as well. Perez has done a nice job this at bat, getting Ludlum off balance. You could see her hesitating a little bit with that tall stance. She has to land into that back leg. Whenever she throws that off speed, she struggles. But that one, the screwball inside gets Ludlum swinging. That's the best of Jenna Perez right there. When she's on, she is absolutely exceptional. Northwestern got a hefty taste of it. It's a challenge for her though, because we talk about advanced knowledge and scouting. And she's already gone up against Oklahoma twice. One being pitched, four earned last year for Jenna Perez. And her first appearance for LMU also came against these Sooners. And because Oklahoma has so much returning experience, Nicole, a lot of these batters don't even have to go to the card and look at the scouting report. They already know. They've already seen her. As here's Hannah Kaur. Kaur. That's an easy grab for Caster. So two quick outs. It's obvious Perez, as she's settling in, hasn't missed a beat from that Northwestern game. She's an effective pitcher. But I think that what makes her so, so good is that Osby that we just saw. The ability to change up speeds, to throw those hitters off balance again and again and again. That's going to be key to longevity, to not just throwing good for one innings or two innings, but being good through a whole entire game, one through seven. Sid Sanders, the pinch hitter, fouls it off. Reminder, you can keep up with USA Softball all year long at www.usasoftball.com. Find local events, the USA Softball National Championship, and the latest on certified equipment. And it's all just one click away. If you're a top 12U player, sign up and try out for the USA All-American Game. Sid Sanders was certainly a top 12 and under player and quite the luxury for the Oklahoma Sooners to be like, yeah, we'd love a fifth inning pinch hitter. We'll just go ahead and get Sidney Sanders off the bench and watch her do her thing. the home run record holder at Arizona State. Got her. Sanders not happy about it. A beautiful off speed. Oklahoma forcing LMU to their final three outs. Reason why, this right here. Torres, a no-doubter for Oklahoma. Her two-run shot as the run rule in play in Oklahoma's finale.
9-0, the Oklahoma Sooners on top, thanks to a run of power. A reminder that PGF was founded in 2009 and today crowns the unquestioned national champions across nine age divisions. Premier Girls Fast Pitch is where the best of the best play in amateur fast pitch softball. Since 2009, thousands of female student athletes have realized their dreams to play on the college level by performing with top level competition in front of college recruiters. PGF produces hundreds of tournaments and showcases each year across the country, including the PGF High School All-American Game, unanimously considered the highest individual honor in youth fast pitch softball. Premier Girls Fast Pitch, the future of the game is here. Hashtag play PGF. Well, right now, the definition of fast pitch, Nicole May, she puts together a gem and will give way to Kelly Maxwell, who looks to close the door for Oklahoma. That is a monster of a one-two in the circle for the Sooners. Talk about being able to <laughs> have a staff that could come in, start a game, come in, be relief, come in, be a closer. They have so many pitchers in their staff that can do all three. And I just saw a Kinsey Hansen smirk right there, and I was like, yeah, that's kind of how it must feel to be on the receiving end of so many great pitchers. Oklahoma, they have a lot of different looks to them as well. So I think not only are they great pitchers in their own right, but they're great pitchers because they complement one another so well. That's what makes them such a good staff is they're all different looks. You have your lefties, you have your righties, you have speed, you have down balls, up balls, side-to-side -side movement. So being able to have that versatility makes it really hard for a team who, like LMU, a really, really good team, but it makes it hard to prep for because – you have a limited amount of time and you're trying to prep against six pitchers <laughs> and you you only have so much time it makes it difficult as a team as a hitter to come up with some really in-depth solid game plan lmu getting this right as they prepare to take on maxwell number two in strikeouts per seven a year ago and the headline of the offseason, her transfer from Oklahoma State to Oklahoma. Final line for Nicole May reads four innings pitched, seven Ks, just one walk, and not a whole lot else. Maxwell fires that in for a strike. Outstanding from Nicole May, who ended it by striking out the side in order, by the way, in the fourth. That gets through and off the glove. Clutch timing for LMU, and they are on the base pass. Might be difficult to prep for these pitchers, but not impossible. LMU showing that that ball is a backdoor that just leaks over the plate. That ball hits so solidly that tips off the glove of Jennings and ricochets all the way to the outfield. Ariana Harike. Hitting for LMU. So Fawara, the first hit of the day. And it comes against Maxwell. And that's over the head of Jennings. LMU right now, it's one goal. Extend the game. They need a couple of runs in order to do it. Those two runs are on the pond now. Tamika Chung. And it comes by what we talked about earlier in the game, by staying together, communicating with one another, and just passing the bat. One pitch at a time, one swing at a time. Kelly Maxwell, she has been one of the most prominent arms 
in college softball these past few years at Oklahoma State. Now that she's in Oklahoma, not much has changed as far as everybody knows what she has. So while you might not have been able to prep for her, you understand Kelly Maxwell, lefty, curveball pitcher. I got the gist. Really, really good pitcher. But having an idea of what this pitcher throws, what her go-tos are, helps you out as you're trying to adjust on the fly. That's great rise right there from Kelly Maxwell. Chong, all sky, all big sky, excuse me, at Weber. Already a pinch hit successful run, wound up two for two against Bethune. She'll chop that one up, Tiare the short one, the only play. By the way, Pitch. you're sitting at home wondering why you would take May out with a no-hitter. It's kind of a matter of course for her. Nicole May has been a part of seven combined no-hitters already in her career. So, yes, a no-hitter always has meaning. But number eight, wow, that's kind of a big deal for Oklahoma this year. Less so in the Nicole May no-hitters column. It's also just understanding how Oklahoma wants to work this staff is as a yep, staff. Exactly right. Being able to feel that rhythm of, okay, this pitcher may be wheeling and dealing, but if I want to be able to feel confident in bringing Kelly Maxwell in as a closer, I, I want to give her some experience as a closer. And LMU, they're a great opposition for her right now. They are certainly challenging her. Jennings steps on the bag, fires, and makes the play. What can't Tiare do? The Oklahoma Sooners slam the door in the fifth, and they will finish their time in Puerto Vallarta undefeated as they have been for so long. The streak rolls on, 67 and counting. Maxwell gets some help from her new teammate. And man, Oklahoma, they have made a statement this week here at the Mary Nutter, the reigning champs, their bats are still hot. Their pitchers are still strong. <laughs> that was showcased today. We had three home runs, and they all looked great. Offense rolling, defense rolling, pitching rolling. The three-time defending champs remain as advertised. They've got all the momentum in the world. Headed into the opening of Love's Field on March 1st against Miami. LMU's got a trip to Hawaii on deck. Nicole, and big one here. Oklahoma gets the win, and we've got an even bigger one coming up between UCLA and Tennessee. Man, this was a great game, great ending, great tournament for both of these teams. They got some quality at-bats, quality pitching innings, some quality wins. I'm excited to see what LMU does in conference. Excited to see what Oklahoma does as they settle in to their new home stadium in Oklahoma at Love's, Love's Field. But this game is over. This next one coming up, I cannot wait.